Were you able to see where Mr. Mew went after he stabbed these folks? No. Uh, were you concerned about where he went? Or were you, you know, other uh, no. Uh, did you uh, make your way up to Isaac? Yeah. Were you able to see that he had been wounded? The first two days of testimony in the Apple River stabbing trial has been packed with emotional moments like that one you just saw. Those closest to 17-year-old Isaac Schumann recalled their memories of the day that he was fatally stabbed. And on Tuesday, the jury heard from Isaac's mom, who described receiving that call that no parent ever wants to get. Saw Isaac <laughs> the morning of July 30th before he left. Did you know he was negotiating with friends? Yes. At some point, did you learn what happened? Yes. I get a call from Owen's phone, and I thought. Isaac's phone went dead, or he lost it or something, and so he was calling me from Owen's phone. But Owen called, screaming that Isaac had been stabbed. I just went running, and I, I ran up into one of the ambulances, thinking that it was Isaac sitting up in there, and I started crawling into the ambulance, and I realized it wasn't Isaac, it was one of the other kids. And so then I climbed out, and then I looked, and I saw... I saw Isaac's hair just laying on the river bank. I didn't know what was him. And they were trying to perform CPR on him. When you got to Isaac, um, was it clear he was already deceased? Yes. Why did you start recording? because uh, he was just kind of looking suspicious from what I was seeing. Do you see Mr. Mew's hand grabbing onto your tube there? I do. Um, it's touching your leg? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Did that cause you concern? Most definitely. Did you and others start yelling at him to get away? Yeah. Um, did you realize that Isaac Schumann had been stabbed? Yes. How did you know that? Uh, I kind of just looked down the line of people that were hurt. I saw the first person, like, that's not my friend. That's not my friend. That's not my friend. The last person I looked at was my guy, Isaac. Yeah. Uh, did you uh, make your way up to Isaac? Yeah. Were you able to see that he had been wounded? Okay. You were yelling for him to get away. Huh? You wanted him to get away. Yes. You said he was standing in your path, right? Yes. He moves over out of your path. Yes. So your group, you have to be excited because your group now can go right by, right? Yeah, we could float by, yes. You could have floated by. Yes. But you didn't. Yes. The purpose of taunting him and calling him a pedophile and pointing at him in that situation is what? Uh, kind of just to let them know what he was doing. You already let them know what he was doing. Yeah, but I guess it was just still going on. What was still going on? What you just described. Well, I know what you're doing. Okay. The question is, why are you doing it? I guess I don't know. It was two years ago. At some point, did you realize that um, Isaac Schumann had been stabbed? Yes. Uh, did you actually see that happen? I didn't see the action of him getting stabbed, no. Uh, when did you first realize that he had been stabbed? Um, I noticed he got stabbed when he fell into the water. Uh, were you near him when that happened? Uh, I was close. I was uh, a couple feet away from him. Um, what did you see um, on Isaac as he fell into the water? I know this is hard. Um, yeah, so when he uh, when he fell into the water, I knew he was holding um, the left side of his chest. And so when I picked him up, I noticed he had a huge gash in his chest. Um, did you, once you realized that Isaac was injured, did you go to him? 
Yeah, I immediately grabbed him, uh, saw that he was injured and wasn't able to completely move, and um, that's when I decided uh, I needed to hold pressure onto the wound and drag, <laughs> and, and drag him to the shore. Whew. This is a really, really tragic case. I said earlier this morning, there are no winners in this one, no matter who prevails, because we have a life lost and many lives changed forever. Let's bring in our guest now and talk a little bit about whether this was a murder or whether this was a justifiable homicide. Trial attorney Jamie White on the program today. Good to see you, Jamie. Uh, Jamie, give me your initial assessment, seeing the facts we've seen so far come into evidence, the video evidence. Uh, what are your initial impressions of this case that we're seeing in Wisconsin? <clears throat> so uh, respectfully, I, I, reg I agree with your initial comments. This is a tragic situation. Um, well, you know, what we've seen, I live in Michigan, which is adjacent to Wisconsin. We have a, a lot of the same politics. There's a lot of, even though Wisconsin, I don't believe, has a stand your ground statute. You know, there seems to be this mentality that you can go out and, um, and, and take matters into your own hands when not necessarily that, that that doesn't need to be and and so you know I, I feel for all the parties here but this young man should not have been stabbed period um, you know you know the classic self-defense line across all 50 states is if you are le literally in immediate harm of bodily serious bodily harm or death then you have the ability to do that this just wasn't the case um and I, just I, just to give you a, a, a parable i you know i have a friend who's um he's a ex-detective and we played golf all the time and fished all the time and he dealt with the most serious people you know but when he wasn't on duty he never had a gun and i asked him one time i said why don't you carry a gun you know off duty um being a young attorney and he said, because it's hard to take a butt whipping with a gun on. And, I, you know, what I, and so, you know, I just think there's something to be said for this stopping people from taking um, violent matters further than they need to be.